Is your water utility thinking about deploying a fixed network? If so, I've got something you seriously need to consider prior to soliciting quotations or putting out your RFP. The question is, who is going to manage the network infrastructure? Do you have a qualified individual within your utility to continuously monitor, maintain, and manage the network yourself? Stay tuned, we're gonna discuss some of the options available for you today, a utility managed network, versus a network as a service agreement. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the Smart Water Show, brought to you by Badger Meter. I'm your host, Maurice Blackwell, and this is the show where we discuss your day-to-day -day water utility problems and find the most effective technology solutions for you. Today, only about 20% of water utilities have deployed a fixed network meter reading system. These systems have been around for more than 25 years. However, the complexity of these systems have caused many utilities to take the easy way out and simply deploy a mobile AMR meter reading system. Well, today we're going to discuss an option available for water utilities to remove the burden of managing that fixed network infrastructure. As I previously stated, there are two ways for water utilities to deploy a fixed network. A utility managed approach where the utility owns, operates the fixed network themselves. The alternative to that is where most utilities are going today is entering into a network as a service agreement, NAS for short, with normally with the manufacturer to own, install, monitor, maintain, and manage that network for them. I've put together a chart that lays out the considerations regarding a network as a service agreement. First, let's take a look at the endpoint considerations under a network as a service agreement. The first three points really have responsibility of the utility. So the ownership of the endpoints, the utility owns those, the utility will install the endpoints, either in the home or in a meter pit, and then they'll also maintain the pit setting or the mounting of the endpoint. The last point to consider regarding your endpoints are the updates to firmware. This is a point where the manufacturer will take over and take responsibility. So pushing out new firmware capabilities to that endpoint is going to not rely on the utility, but on the manufacturer. The first point to consider under the fixed network itself is the ownership piece. Under the normal networks of service agreement, the manufacturer would own the network itself. Now, there are hybrid models available. If the utility wants to own the network, they can do that, but that is sort of a hybrid approach. Point number two is the planning and installation of the fixed network. This is something that really always should fall to the manufacturer because of its complexity. It reminds me of a situation that a potential customer had talked to me about. About 10 years ago, they had deployed a data collector-based fixed network. Their service territory is about 37 square miles, and the manufacturer that they were dealing with had said to them, yep, we can plan a fixed network for this, and it'll take 27 data collectors. They agreed to that. They, they moved forward with that particular deployment. However, at the end of the day, once everything was done, they found that they had many holes in the system. Well, the manufacturer came back to them and says, you know what, it's really gonna take about 41 collectors and repeaters to really get all of the endpoints calling in 100%. So if a utility had to go through that methodology themselves, that planning process, it could be quite confusing and it could be a little bit frustrating. The last step related to deployment are the potential leases that will need to be negotiated on behalf of the manufacturer. In this case, let's say you look at your service territory and you have particular areas where you can deploy data collectors, where the utility actually owns property or has rights of ways. There may be areas where the utility doesn't have an option but to, to lease a particular spot from maybe a private citizen that owns a building somewhere that you need coverage for. This is something that, again, under the networks and service contract would go to the manufacturer to negotiate those leases and pay for those leases as well. Once the fixed network is deployed, someone needs to be responsible for continuously monitoring that network. 
under a Networks and Service Agreement, that manufacturer is going to have a dedicated network operations center, or NOC, that actually continuously does that. Looks at the network, making sure everything is operating correctly, and then making sure that everything is up and running. Security of the network is another point that's going to fall on the manufacturer to continuously monitor the system. The next point to consider is the annual inspection that will need to be done on this hardware. The hardware itself will need to be inspected, the tower, the structure itself, the foundation. If it's a very tall tower, the guy wires will need to be inspected as well. These are things that a utility many times doesn't have the personnel within the utility that has the, the right licenses to do these types of inspection. Again, these are things that you're going to have to probably hire a third party to do for you, but they need to be considered when you're looking at your overall budget. Routine preventive maintenance also needs to be considered in your budgeting process. The radio equipment themselves, backup batteries, each of these have a backup battery for intermittent power outages. If you have generators on site for long-term backup power, there may need to be HVAC that needs to be installed. There's normal fencing that's there for security. These things all need to be maintained over the life of the system. Catastrophic weather events seem to be the norm these days. When dealing with a traditional data collector-based fixed network, things like tornadoes or hurricanes can really cause you to be down or your network out of service for long periods of time. These are things that the manufacturer will take responsibility for under the Network as a Service Agreement, things that you don't have to worry about. Next thing to consider are periodic outages that happen from things like lightning strikes or storm damage. Under the Networks of Service contract, again, it's something that you as a utility don't have to worry about, but the manufacturer will take care of getting your network up and operating after these types of events. The part that really causes so much consternation here is the unpredictability in your budgeting. When these type of events happen over the 20-year life cycle, you don't know how many data collectors are going to go down or be damaged over that time period. How could you possibly budget for those types of events over this 20-year life cycle of the system? Related to that are the inventory of spare parts. When you have a data collector that goes down, hopefully you'll have the right parts on hand to make those repairs. If not, those are going to be times where your network could be down for extended periods of time. Just like your endpoints, from time to time, the data collectors need to have firmware updates or patches sent to them. This is going to be on the responsibility of the manufacturer. The next point that utilities fail to truly plan for over the 20-year life cycle are the replacement of the data collectors. Realize that the endpoints last about 20 years. The data collectors need to last that long. They don't. They are glorified computers that are out in the environment. They need to be changed out every 7 to 10 years. So over that 20-year lifespan, you're going to change the complete data collector-based network once or twice over that life of the system. Many of my customers continue to grow and expand their service territory over time. Under a traditional data collector based system where the utility would own, they would be responsible now for installing new data collectors where they're going to need to expand that network. Under a network as a service agreement, that manufacturer is then going to come back in, reassess that area, and then install the needed data collectors Let's talk about the different types of fixed networks available to you. Under the Networks of Service Agreement, we talked a lot about how a data collector based fixed network relates to this type of agreement. The other viable option for water utilities, of course, is a cellular based fixed network. Under a cellular based fixed network, this type of network is designed from the ground up as a network as a service offering you have the major telecommunication companies working for you in order to keep your network up and running for your important metering data. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below. I'd be happy to provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have any questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me here on LinkedIn. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will dive into the topic of mechanical versus electronic meters for residential application. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time 
on the Smart Water Show.